Hi, everyone. Can you identify public housing in your country? Does this picture communicate something? What problems can you identify with the housing stock? Do you know who manages them? My name is Samson Aziaba. I am a PhD candidate in the Faculty of Architecture and Built Environment, TU Delft. In this lecture, I will discuss the challenges of public housing management in Ghana and share some directions for possible solutions. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to analyze the challenges of public housing management in your own country and already think of how to solve them. Affordable housing refers to subsidized rental or owner-occupied housing provided generally to households. It may be provided by the state, referred to as public housing, or by the private sector, third sector, or community organizations, referred to as social housing. This lecture focuses on public rental housing in Ghana. So, first, let's have a look at the nature of public housing in Ghana and why we should study the challenges of management. Public housing in Ghana is subsidized rental housing that is provided by the state mainly for civil and public servants and largely managed by local authorities, also referred to as district assemblies. Note that the target group for public housing can vary across countries. For example, low income earners or people within a certain income bracket. Now, you might wonder why we should study the challenges of public housing management. Well, it is because the level of management accounts largely for the poor physical conditions of housing and housing quality. I use an adapted model of the famous 7S framework to analyze public housing management in Ghana. As the name suggests, this model has seven elements, legal framework, policy framework, structure, finance, human resource, culture, and housing quality. But in this lecture, I will focus on six. The seventh, housing quality, being the outcome of a combination of the rest. So, what are the challenges of public housing management in Ghana? First, let's look at legal and policy frameworks together. These refer to regulations and guidelines that define the strategy and boundaries of public housing. They outline the way of carrying out housing management. But these guidelines are, not, are lacking in Ghana. There are no A, regulations that define clearly the responsibilities of actors, and B, strategies to maintain and improve housing conditions. For example, when should, we, should major renovations or demolitions be carried out? What are the standards for repairs and maintenance? All these must be defined in a legal or policy framework. Third, what is the organization's structure for housing management? Structure describes the basis for dividing and coordinating tasks and responsibilities. Structure must detail both vertical and horizontal relationships and communication in the organization. In Ghana, there is a weak coordination among the actors in the structure. At the vertical level, a central government agency, the controller and accountant general's department, collects rents by direct deductions from tenants' income. At the district level, there is a horizontal relationship between the works department and the allocation committee, who must act jointly to maintain the houses. But all these relationships do not work together well. Also, these departments are not under one authority in order to promote effective control. The fourth challenge has to do with finance structure for housing management. Finance describes strategies to raise and sustain financing, such as fees and charges, loans and rents, that are important for the success of housing management. 
This is lacking in Ghana's public housing sector. Rent is the only source of finance, but when they are collected by the controller and accountant general's department, they are not in turn transferred to district assemblies for management. Moreover, the rent levels are very low, making rent rev revenue practically inadequate to cover cost of maintenance. The sum effect is that the houses are not maintained. The fifth challenge, local authorities lack the manpower, knowledge and skills for public housing management. The number of skilled personnel, such as managers and artisans, plumbers, carpenters and electricians, to carry out management and maintenance is not enough. This inadequacy, together with the other elements, makes it difficult for local authorities to maintain the stock. Last but not least is organizational culture. It describes the values, norms such as respect and care that guide the work of housing staff. No defined values guide the attitude of housing staff in Ghana. Therefore, you find that the housing staff do not respond to repair requests and they also do not engage with tenants. This poor attitude may be attributed to other challenges of management such as lack of finance, poor expertise, and weak accountability. Now that we have identified these challenges, the next question is, how do, we solve the, how do you solve them? Studies in housing management present some ideas. First, by involving tenants, housing managers may be able to receive feedback for improving service delivery. Second, Housing management must be organized so as to define clearly a hierarchy of control and supervision. And finally, effective rent policy. That is, rent setting and efficient rent collection can improve availability of finance for management and maintenance. So, can you already associate public housing in your country with some of these challenges? Well, the message from this lecture is that while developing countries strive to address housing shortages, mainly through new constructions, attention should be given to managing the existing stock because it helps to maintain housing conditions, enhances the asset value of properties, and improves the quality of life of tenants.